Oh yeah, and today I got a battle for you. I got the Sigma 16 to 28 millimeter f2.8 zoom versus the Sony 16 to 35 f2.8 zoom. Which one is a better vlogging lens all around? Let's talk about it together next. Doing good hands. Back out here at the beach for another video. Today I got the Sigma 16 millimeter f2.8. I'm gonna tell you about the good and the bad of this lens. And I'm currently using the Sony FX3, so testing out a new camera as well. What do you think of the image quality so far? Currently shooting an S-Log 3. Guys, what's up here, bro? Yeah, it's like, it's gonna tell us just something about this abandoned building. Okay. I mean, this is one hell of a combo. I got the Sony ECM B10 mic up on top. This could be a great vlogging combo. With the Sigma, you're gonna get a very nice, short, compact lens. With the FX3, you're gonna get a small, compact cinema camera, which is gonna do great vlog style content just like this. And I can tell you that I have been loving this combo. Been using it now for about three or four days, really shooting a lot of video and absolutely enjoying using this setup. Very light, very compact. So this lens is a short 16 to 28 millimeter zoom. It is an F2.8, so it's really light and compact. And I'm really enjoying using it because it's a lot lighter than my Sony 16 to 35 that thing is pretty heavy that's almost two pounds this lens is about a pound so it's about half the weight and it's really nice short compact it also has a manual and autofocus switch so you can easily switch between manual and autofocus pretty easily hopefully the audio is really good today because you know it's not windy at all here at the beach see that that storm clouds rolling in that's okay we are not worried about that at all maybe a little bit we're gonna go check out some seagulls and see what kind of slow motion capabilities we can get with this lens let's go ahead and check that out This lens has no optical stabilization, so you're gonna be relying only on in-camera stabilization. Right now, I do have the active stab on, so using the active stabilization does help smooth out some of that micro jitters, and it does help try and keep the lens a little bit more stable. I am walking a little bit slower, and on my screen, it looks great, but when we get back into the editing process, I guess we'll see how smooth this lens really is with the active stab on. So one of the things that is really nice about this lens is how small and compact it is compared to the Sony 16 to 35 millimeter lens. It's definitely smaller, it's lighter, it's more compact. Now this lens was made in 2022, so it's brand new to the Sigma lineup. And if you're looking for a good alternative to that Sony 16 to 35, this is going to be a great alternative for you. Now I've used the Tamron 17 to 28. Now you lose one millimeter there, and the one millimeter can make a big difference. Again, I have active stab on here, so we're pretty much at a 17 and a half ish millimeter focal length and I'm holding this thing about half an arm length away. With that, you are definitely gonna get noticeable difference at that one millimeter. I do find Sigma's construction quality to be so much more superior to that of the Tamron. Tamron feels a little more plasticky, a little bit more on the cheaper side. This lens, this thing feels pretty heavy and built to last. It definitely has metal construction or something going on here that gives you a little bit more of a premium feel. Now the cost is roughly about the same. You can find this lens for about $900 on B&H or Amazon. And links are down in the description. Now the Tamron, that's gonna run you around $799. So you're gonna save about $100 going with that Tamron lens. But again, the quality feels a lot more premium here. Plus you get that extra millimeter. So of course, Sigma does a great job of really filling in that middle gap. You got the Tamron, which is kind of that low budget feel. And then you got the Sony, which is like a $2,200 lens. It's pretty expensive, but you get that extra seven millimeters on the long end, which definitely can come in handy. But at only $900, this lens fits perfectly in between. And it's a great alternative. I mean, that Tamron lens is good, but it has no autofocus, manual focus switch, and everything is internal, just like this lens. All the zooming is totally internal. So you can throw this thing on a gimbal and you don't have to worry about it really kind of 
going all over the place when you start zooming in and out. Now you're also gonna be quite happy with the minimum focusing distance on this lens. It's only nine inches. What is that noise? You. Check out the minimum focusing distance on oh, this Sigma okay, lens. This is at 16 millimeters. I am literally that far away. This has got great minimum focusing distance and it keeps picking up my eye, which is fantastic. This is great video. 100% great video right here. This is the stuff dreams are made of. Where the Sony is gonna be closer to 11 inches. So you're gonna be able to get this thing a lot closer and still be able to maintain great autofocus. One of the things that you will notice about this lens is that the bokeh is not as good as the Sony lens. That's because this only has nine round aperture blades where the Sony has 11. So you're gonna get a little bit of a rounder bokeh using that Sony lens. But I can tell you, does that really matter when you're this wide? Probably not. Getting hit right in the face right now with the rain. Let's change angles. Now that Tamron is gonna get you a minimum focusing distance of only about eight inches. So you're gonna be able to get a lot closer, but you lose that one millimeter. So you're already gonna be a little bit further away than the 16. What I do like a lot about this Sigma lens is that you can keep the lens hood on here while still using an ND filter. Speaking of ND filters, you're gonna need a 72 millimeter filter thread. Depending on what you typically do, I typically buy a big ND filter and then I step it down using step up rings. Oh, it looks like the rain clouds should be subsiding here shortly. Maybe here, maybe we might be good. Oh, it might be good. All right, so here's the deal. Which lens to get? Should you get the Tamron 17 to 28 f 2.8, the Sigma 16 to 28 2.8, or the Sony 16 to 35? If you want the very best, most premium lens, then you're gonna want that Sony 16 to 35 millimeter. But if you wanna save $1,400, this Sigma lens is gonna do it for you. I think this Sigma lens pretty much puts that Tamron lens to bed. That thing is probably done. We're gonna need a version two of that Tamron if we're gonna try and make that thing work. But right now, I think Sigma's got you. I've always been a huge fan of Sigma image quality and I can tell you that this lens does not disappoint. So if you are looking for a premium piece of glass, it's gonna do excellent for vlogging and for everyday general purpose. This is going to be a great lens for you. At $900, you're gonna go from a $900 to a $2,200? I don't think so. This lens is gonna do it for you. This is the lens to beat, I think, right now in the F2.8 category. Now, if Sony brings out a version two of their 16 to 35, we might have to reconsider this conversation. But right now, with this thing, being at $900, being only 15 ounces versus, and I was wrong, a pound and a half, this lens is going to do it for you. This thing will tuck very nicely into a bag. You pair it up with that Sigma 24 to 70 and you got pretty much a perfect combo of beautiful lenses. So I would go with this, the 16 to 28 f 2.8, the Sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8 and then you could get some like the sony 20 millimeter that's gonna be your low light king right there and you got yourself an amazing kit for traveling the world if you have any questions or concerns make sure you leave those down in the comments below i would love to answer them regarding this lens if you like this video i'm sure you're gonna like the video on the screen now it's about another lens for the sony system before you leave don't forget to like subscribe and ring the bell thanks for watching all the way to the end really appreciate you see you in the next one